Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments. I'm Alan, and as we promised, we're here today continuing the most important aspects about the UNAS Pro that as we saw in our previous video, we already know how to set up, configure, and optimize for the best performance that you can get out of one of these devices. We wanted to wait a little to show this particular video after using it for quite some time, this in case that you're wanting to get one of these fantastic NAS devices and want to make an informed decision. Also very important to note, and as we said last time, Unify has developed this device with two main aspects in mind, performance for up to mid-sized businesses and data integrity. In a nutshell, in our last video we learned first that the UNAS Pro ideally must receive identical hard drives, either hard disk drives or SSDs, but only in SATA configuration. Better if they're all bought at once. Second, the more disks that you add, the more space efficiency and performance that you're gonna get. Third, you do not have much control over newly installed disks, and if you're not careful, you might lose data in the disks that you insert in case that they're not new. And finally, well, we all know that this is a unified product that was launched less than a year ago, so by the time that you watch this video, there may have been many improvements in their still very limited interface. Of course, functionality may be improved too, we all have thought of many cool features that could be implemented and most importantly, the bugs that have been reported by users must be fixed in the near future. More of that in a moment, as that annoying 65 megabyte per second transfer cap that some of us have experienced. So in this video, we'll see how you can first create users and share resources. This is sort of a review. Second, how you can use your existing VPN connection or Unify Identity VPN to use your NAS as your own cloud system. Very important. This either from your mobile device or your personal computer. Uh, then we're going to see how to use snapshots. Then we're going to see how to analyze local performance you may get at this point and what considerations you may have. We're going to be linking to a Microsoft Active Directory for joining domain users into your NAS. And finally, our conclusions and good practices. Besides all this, and just to mention it, as we didn't test it thoroughly, those of you who are interested in security and are willing to sacrifice some performance, you can also use Drive Encryption for this specific resource that you want. Okay, so about creating users and sharing resources with your NAS, uh, it really couldn't be any easier. Just create a user right here. The system will send an invitation automatically to that user's email asking to join by downloading Unify Identity. By the way, we invite you to watch our video about it. Uh, if the user already exists, you can send the invitation again. Remember that such invitations have an expiration date. It is just a way of providing the end user with your proper secure credentials. The end user will download Unify Identity and will just load the credentials so it will access resources from the device. It's as simple as that. As you can see in this example, you do not need for this to establish a secure VPN as the connection itself is secure. That's it. Very simple yet very powerful as it doesn't matter the location where you are, you'll have access to your files as if you owned your own cloud system. And actually, that is exactly what it is. You'll have terabytes of data remotely stored in your NAS, and you can actually use your online preferred drive service to back up certain files. Um, the uses you can give to this functionality are many. We also said that to effectively share your resources through the local network, you need to create a file services and time machine credentials. That name explains it all. Just by going to the user's assignment, you'll be able to set such username and password. Also, in the Files tab, you can create more resources available to your users and share them with the collaborators that you want. Same benefits. You'll be able to access your resources as you choose. You can, for example, use the web-based interface, of which we highlight the search function that is very efficient and very fast, or in the local network through the SMB credentials that you just created, you'll get access to your resources. But what if you want to access your files remotely from anywhere in the world as if you were in your local network? This takes us to our second chapter, using a VPN to access your files as if you were local. Once you have created your resources as well as the local file server credentials and you are away, you can connect to it 
in many ways. We'll analyze two of them, using a unified gateway with a unified identity and having any other gateway and with an open VPN server to connect to it. Uh, this functionality is available, for example, in all the OMATA routers. For this first option, the only thing that you need to do in your unified gateway is to invite your users to access such device through Unify Identity's VPN. It works just as direct access to your UNAS Pro, only that with the Unify Gateway and Identity's VPN, you'll have access to the whole network. Once you use such credentials and connect, your device will have access to your UNAS Pro just as if you were local to your NAS, which is incredibly useful. For example, in this computer, I have mapped a network drive to my NAS. It doesn't matter where I am. Normally, they are not going to be available. I use Unify Identity to connect to my Unify Dream Machine Pro. This is a VPN connection to my gateway. Um, this is not a connection directly to the NAS. And then I will have access to those mapped network drives, like I said, like if I were sitting right next to my UNAS Pro. Now you can do this with Unify Identity, or if you prefer, with OpenVPN, you'll have exactly the same result. Export the OVPN file from your Unify's gateway or any other router that you own. In this case, I'm using a UDM Pro. Then download the client software in your computer, import the OpenVPN file, connect, and again, access to your UNAS Pro. All these procedures, by the way, we have created separate videos for them, even WireGuard, remote VPN connections, which we also liked a lot. You might as well have a Nomad router from TP-Link, uh, as we've seen in those videos too. Create an open VPN or WireGuard server and grant remote access to your UNAS Pro, exactly the same way that you mapped network drives having a unified gateway, but using any other remote VPN connections. Now, if you have a unified gateway, you can even merge your gateways to your UNAS as you do with any site. All this we just saw is very useful for many situations and it is very likely that as you watch this, you are already thinking the many uses that you can give to this type of versatile remote access. As of snapshots, many of you may be familiar with the fantastic application that this service can have, for example, in collaborative work in which you might find the need to go to a previously modified and saved file without losing time or most importantly, valuable information. You can specify to which shared resources snapshots will be active, giving you more control over this valuable service, even across all drives. The application at this time supports this many snapshots. To set it up, you just go to the tab Snapshots, select the network resource for which you need the snapshots to be active, select the limit, the schedule, and apply the changes. It's as simple as that. As of performance, the last video we were able to test how good this NAS behaves. We mentioned that we were connecting to it through a 10 gigabit per second um, SFP plus module to our switches. First, we connected directly to an SFP plus transceiver from Unify to this US 16XG aggregation switch. And then we have been testing for you in a separate video, uh, this fantastic HPE networking 1930 switch. This, by the way, will be available very soon in our channel in another video. Using any of them, the performance of the UNAS Pro was very good. And about that, one disk setup and two disk setup will have roughly the same performance for writing. For reading, two disks may have noticeable difference as both of them may be reading simultaneously. From then on, the more disks that you add, at least in RAID 5, you'll improve not only in performance, as we said, but also in space efficiency. If you're too concerned about data integrity, RAID 10, for the UNAS Pro would be your choice, and in that case, performance is very similar to what we're seeing right now on screen with four disks in RAID 5. Anyhow, we consider four disks to be the minimum disk configuration that you can implement with your UNAS Pro to get a fairly good performance, both for reading and writing. Having a good efficiency of your spending and budget, uh, go for the biggest hard drives that you can afford so you can add more disks in the future, expanding it as you please. This expansion, as we saw in our previous video, is done while the system is active and does not require the unit to work exclusively for that. However, performance may be affected for the duration of that process. Uh, of course, this, depending on the size of the disk, may even take up to a week. That for the biggest hard drive supported by the unit. And about performance, yes, we encountered one problem. We have experienced what seems to be a very annoying bug that does not affect all the computers. This is what is weird. 
As a matter of fact, of all our workstations, only one was affected by this inexplicable behavior of the NAS not letting you transmit at more than 65 megabit per second. But at the same time that this was happening, other clients were able to transfer to the NAS at 1 gigabit per second rates as their adapters supported. A topic for another video as we have not been able to solve that in that particular client. By the way, our most powerful client with fiber optic SFPs and directly linked to our aggregation switch. Okay, now let's talk about linking the UNAS to an Active Directory environment, something that many may want. This works as an example for many wanting to implement UNAS pros across your existing infrastructure. It is not difficult, but may be tricky. Besides, of course, having a user in the domain with the appropriate permissions to read users from the Active Directory, two main considerations to go directly to the point. The first one, the fields and the way they must be written in the setup interface of the UNAS Pro. Here you can see the syntax that you can use. Base the end as this, the organizational unit, the prefix of the domain name, and the suffix. Use this syntax. The users have to be in that specific organizational unit as that is what we chose. Once you do this, you may not get any user synced as you have to check the correct attribute mapping as there are two things that are imperative for this to work. First, the name and then the associated email for the system to be able to invite users and send credentials. According to this, each user in your organization must have each of those assigned fields complete. This is a test server. I have right here running a test domain controller. Here we can see that the users had not synchronized as fields had not been assigned correctly. After fixing that, your users will start synchronizing. You can also assign groups corresponding to your Active Directory groups, which may also be very important for that initial synchronization. You can even have running a delegated authentication that will let your domain controller handle the sign-in validation, something that, by the way, we have not tested. Okay, so our conclusions and analysis regarding the UNAS Pro are very simple. The UNAS Pro has opted for hard disk drives for a very simple reason, reliability. Performance is gained when combining several disks together. There are very divided opinions regarding the inexistent option for letting the drives spin down, some say that it is not really beneficial for long-lasting drives, and others argue on the contrary. And about the 65 megabyte per second transfer rate, we hear you in the comments if anyone has found the real solution, as we've tried several so-called working solutions online. We still have to test integration and backup with Google and how it works, um, even though integration is not native with some services, as you saw with Active Directory, it was never intended to be made that way. Uh, needs have evolved. SMB does not support simultaneous access and editing of files, which is a limitation compared to, say, direct access to Google Drive. Having access to your NAS in less than a second from anywhere in the world is unmatched to anything that we have tested and used. Some of you may have a different insight, and of course, you're more than welcome to leave it in the comments. In future videos with our integration to Google Drive, we'll comment on how it has behaved over the months. For now, we hope that this particular video brought to you a little more information and our opinions, of course, of this fantastic device. Thanks for watching and see you next time.